Good morning to everyone. Happy Sabbath and happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. Uh, to begin, next Sabbath, 19th of May, we will be celebrating Community Service Evangelism Day. Please take note, next Sabbath, we'll be celebrating Community Services Evangelism Day. In the afternoon, there will be a visit to the Garden of Eden Senior Citizen Home. The van is Brother Revy. Brother Revy's van will transport. It departs at 2.30 p.m. The fee is $8. All who are interested, Also, to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, if you're interested, a sheet of paper will be passed around. You can sign your name to indicate your interest. So that's next Sabbath. The van leaves at 2.30 p.m. going to the Garden of Eden home, senior citizens' home, and the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. And for all community services, Personnel, they will be practiced on Monday and Thursday night at 6 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, you are asked to be, be there. If you need more information, see Brother Miller, Brother Leo Tom Miller, or Sister Noreen Thomas. Okay, please take note. Next Sabbath, visit to the Senior Citizens Home and the Milton K2 Memorial Hospital. You would have heard before that May is recognized as Child's Month in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The church is doing their part to highlight, to engage children in preaching the gospel and sharing the gospel message. There is a special program on the radio, NBC Radio 705 at 6.15 every Thursday. The New Life broadcast and the children are given an opportunity in this month to share in the spread of the gospel. So you're, you're asked to tune in Radio 705, NBC Radio 705 at 6.15 a.m. for this month. Okay. We are reminded of the funeral service for the late Sister Mary Woods tomorrow. It will take place right here beginning at 2 p.m. We extend condolences to the family and friends of Sister Woods, the late Sister Woods. As a result, there will be no Sunday night service here at the church. This Wednesday night, all cottage meeting groups will assemble at Lime Hill for a grand street meeting. The time is 7 p.m. Sorry? Shantytong. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Shant it all. Good. Yes, at 7 p.m. at Brother Sill's house. His yard. Oh, next to me. <laughs> good. It's good that we are all listening. Okay, okay. Good. So everybody, you're asked to come out. We have room for everybody. Good? So 7 p.m. See you there. Invite your friends to come and to share and get a blessing. Okay, we are reminded of our children's choir fest, which will take place on the 26th of May, right here at our church. Children, you are reminded of practice session. Brother Sam, today at 3 p.m., children, you have choir fest practice. Please say a prayer for our children as they prepare for this event. You're also reminded of the grand social plan for Mount Twin. The date had to be changed because of the funeral for Sister Williams from Omespo SDA Church. So the date has been changed to Sunday, June 3rd. Please take note. It promises to be a day of fun and fellowship. I mean, I shouldn't have to say this because, you know, generally when we meet, we have fun and we have fellowship. And of course, food makes it all the better. Right, Sister Lewis? Good. So prepare accordingly. We expect to see you there. You know, Mount Twin is a, a good location. 
and hopefully there won't be too many other distractions while we are there. So please prepare for Sunday, 3rd June. Also, Pastor Samuel, who left for Trinidad recently, he sends Mother's Day greetings to all our mothers, and he asks that God continues to bless you richly. Good. Adventure meeting this afternoon at 3 p.m. also. Adventure meeting this afternoon at 3 p.m. also. Okay. We are reminded also of the Master Guide Retreat and Leadership Training, which will take place on the weekend of Friday 18th to Sunday 20th of May. All Master Guides, please take note. Okay. Yes, and Brother Greg Thompson, where is, where is he? Is he here? To my right. Okay. Brother Greg Thompson is leaving us on Monday. We wish you a safe journey. I want to say back home to your other home. Yes, please convey our, our greetings to your family. And we, we uh, please keep him in your prayers. Sunset this, after, this evening, sorry, at 6.23 p.m. And next Friday, 18th at 6.24. Oh, sorry. That announcement. AY program this evening begins at 4.15 p.m. It will feature our mothers under the theme, Tribute to Mama. So all I invited, children, you're asked to bring out your mothers. The mothers, actually the word is mama. Mamas are asked to bring out the family so that all of us can laugh and grow together. On that note, these are all the announcements. Do have a blessed Sabbath. God, all the land, sing for the honor of his name, make his praise glorious, O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise be heard. Let's all repeat John 3.16 for the affirmation of faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mighty Father, thank you for calling us. We ask your God that your Holy Spirit will be present among us today. Speak to our hearts collectively and individually. Inspire and move us to do your will. It's my prayer for all of us in Jesus' name. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath to each one. It is good to have all our regular members here today with us, all our visiting friends, all our students who have returned home from overseas. It's good to have all of you with us today. But most importantly, it is good to have our mothers stay with us, what do you say? Our mothers. And I want to ask all our mothers to stand at this time. All our mothers, 
you, you stood already, but we cannot recognize you, you know, too much. What do you say? All the mothers were standing. Uh, but the mother, I thought you were standing there for one second. So mothers just, just remain standing. I want to bring to you a little something here before I continue. Say is a mother's love. There's no love like a mother's. Her heart is filled with care, with Christ as her example, or Savior's love she'll share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all their tears and heartaches and special work they've done. When days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on. Through many generations, God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers who love with higher love. From power God has given and strength from up above. Ha keep standing. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Some of us, like me, I don't have my mother here. <laughs> but we have mothers left, right, and center. And we really appreciate your love, your guidance, and direction over the years. And so we want to wish you God's special blessing today. And uh, may you continue to be the wonderful mothers you are. At this time, I want all the children, all everybody else, the husbands, the, the children, to meet our mother this time. And not just one handshake and one hug and one kiss. As many of us who can go across and greet our mothers, let's greet them at this time. As you greet somebody in Jesus' name, tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. So we're going to move on our children, our husbands, everybody else. The mothers are going to stay where they are, and we're going to go and greet them. Why don't you greet? name, tell them that those of you who are viewing by air on the internet, we want to welcome in a very special way. Happy Mother's Day to all who are viewing, all mothers you are viewing. Happy Mother's Day. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. Tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. Tell them you forgive them in Jesus' name. Smile. All the mothers are smiling. Jesus loves you. So happy Mother's Day once again, mothers. Amid all the chaos and confusion in this world. 
a mother's love remains constant. Doesn't change, just like that story sister that's in already this morning. A mother's love never changes. And a mother's love more than often brings light to us. Let us turn to number 515. The Lord is my light. After the Lord's light, we have the mother's light. The Lord is my light. Then why should I fear? Number 515. Let's stand. The Lord is my light. Why should I By day and by night, by day and by his night, presence is here. His presence is there. He is my salvation. He is my salvation. From sorrow and sin. Everybody singing out. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, All the mothers and verse number two. All the mothers. The Lord. Faith stronger, looks up, where Jesus, then how, everybody join him in the chorus, the Lord is my light, my joy and my song, by day and by night. Everybody. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my strength. I know in His might. I will comfort Him. My weakness and mercy. Walking by faith. Walking by faith. He opposes me. The Lord is my light. My joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light. The Lord, my all and in all. My all and in all. There is a sign. No darkness. He is my redeemer, yes, my, my redeemer, savior and king. My savior and king. With saints and with, with angels. Saints and with angels is everybody singing the chorus sing. now. Oh, the Lord is my light, joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me alone. Good morning, brothers. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Our scripture reading is taken from First John. Chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. First John, sorry, 5 to 10. First John, chapter 1, verses 5 to 10. Okay, we will read responsibly. We will have the males beginning first and then the females after. Okay, it's on the, on the screen. So males. If 
If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Together, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, the second um, scripture reading is taken from Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Okay, we will all read this together. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. May the Lord add his blessings. It's prayer time. And as we sing the prayer song together, I'm inviting all mothers to come closer to the altar as we lift our hearts to God in prayer. Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound may our lives be transformed by your love may our souls be refreshed from above at this moment let people Join us now as we come to you in prayer. Oh, kind and ever-loving Father which art in heaven, Lord, we come before thee this Sabbath morning. First of all, Lord, we are thankful for, to thee for life. We are thankful that thou hast allowed us to live to see this another day and to live to see this another Sabbath where we can come here and worship thee unmolested. Lord, we thank thee for the sunshine and the fresh air that we breathe. We thank thee for all the bountiful blessings in life that you bestow upon us day after day. In spite of our weaknesses, dear Lord, you stand by us and you continue to look after us day by day. Lord, as we kneel before thee this morning, I bring all mothers to you, all mothers before you, those who are kneeling here, those who are at home, and all mothers all over the world, wherever they may be at this time. Lord, thou knowest the duty and the responsibility that is placed on us. And I ask you, Lord, to give us the strength that is needed to set the right example to our daughters and to our son and, all, and to all the children who we come in contact with in our daily life. Help that our lives would be a living example and through our lifestyle, they will grow up to be better men and women. Lord, I bring before thee the members of this church, wherever they may be at this time. Thou knowest our individual needs. I ask you to come into our lives and strengthen us, dear Lord, and help that each day that as we live, we would live closer and closer to thee to prepare our lives to meet you when you come to take us home. Be with the speaker for today, dear Lord, Brother Bowman. You have given him a message to bring to us. Open our minds and our hearts. Help us to understand what is being said. And help after today's sermon that something would be said that would lead each one of us closer to you. Continue to watch over us, dear Lord. Be with those in the hospital who cannot come out, those who are ailing. Touch them, dear Lord. Comfort them and grant them the blessings that they are in need of. Continue to watch over us throughout this Sabbath day. And when thou shalt come, may we all have a home with thee. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, at this time we're going to be favored with special music by Sister Senator Hector. Good morning, everyone. And pleasant Sabbath. I trust and pray that this song will be a blessing to all of us, especially all our mothers. In the dark of the midnight, have I off heard my face while the storm? above me and there is no hiding place may the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by storm passes over till the thunder song no more till the clouds roll from heaven from the sky hold me fast let me stand in storm passes by many times Satan whispered there is no need to try for there is no end to my sorrow there is no hope I am but I know that thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise till the storm never darken the sky. Oh, till the storm passes over, till the thunder. Pleasant Sabbath, everyone. Thank you very much, Sister Hector, for that wonderful song. The deacon and deaconesses will now wait on us for the tithes, offering, and gifts. I bring you a reading out of Kenya entitled 
disaster and famine relief. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Isaiah 57, 6 and 7. Chipporah and her husband had three little girls and one baby boy. Like all parents, they want what's best for their kids. But unlike most, they didn't know if they would be able to feed their children today. A severe drought had killed the garden and the supplies the garden that supplies their food and the cows and goats that supply their income. Chipora shares the pain any mother would feel. I really feel hurt when the children cry for food. I am helpless. There is nothing worse than not being able to feed your children. Adra was able to help Chipora and her little ones with an emergency food supply, but there are millions more more people in East Africa who are faced in famine and need help right now. Just like a natural disaster that Adra respond to, hung, hunger can devastate families and communities in a short amount of time, and the most vulnerable are children like Chipporah's precious little ones. We are blessed to share today's offering with Adra, for a disaster and famine relief. Many wait to give until a disaster hit or when lives are already being lost to famine. But today, it's your opportunity to prevent a tragedy from becoming worse. Bring you all the tithes and offering into the storehouse. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you and praise you and lift your holy name. I pray to your God as we return your own entire and offering that it may be used for the furtherance of the gospel. That souls may be born into your kingdom and that the coming will be soon to take us to live with you. These are the most I pray to your son's name. Amen. Just over two decades ago, I was told that there was going to be a new teacher coming to Mountain View Academy, one Dr. Bowman from Guyana. So with bated breath, you know, I waited to see, you know, this Dr. Bowman. And when, he, when he came, I saw this, you know, uh, strong, handsome, energetic, you know, individual. But only to find out that he was not Dr. Bowman then. But since he has been in St. Vincent, he has improved his status. And he, he is now Dr. Bowman. I think he has acquired a title, even though it may not be official. But uh, he's, he's Dr. Bowman. He has become one of us, of Vincentian, he got married here, and he's a very prolific batsman. He got married, and he has in his um, household four wonderful children, three girls and one boy and a beautiful wife. He is currently serving as the principal at Mountain View Adventist Academy. Uh, he has lost a little weight. He's been working hard but he still has a lot of energy. And today, the Lord has chosen one of our elders here, Elder Gabriel Bowman, to speak to us, and I believe that through him, our hearts are going to be blessed. But before he speaks to us, 
We have with us another very vibrant, energetic young man. He's so vibrant, he's, he's sailing the seas. And very shortly, he'll be going back to take up duty. But before he goes back to the sea, we're going to be blessed to hear him sing for us once again. This person is no other than Brother Vin. Brother Vin James. I believe he's see all dressed, you know, as a wonderful hairstyle, <laughs> beautifully attired, as a very graceful walk. You can't see his smile until he turns around, but it looks good when he turn, when he turn around. You'll see it. You see it. <laughs> but the vein is <laughs> it has no emotion to a laugh. But the vein sing for us. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thomas, for your <laughs> words of introduction. Good morning to everyone. Morning. I would just permit me this opportunity to wish my mother and all the mothers of the church a uh, happy Mother's Day. I just want to know that you are special to me. I know this church has some mothers here from since I accepted this message. They have been a mother to me, foundation. I don't want to call their names because I would miss one of them and I don't want them to feel bad. But I just want to wish them a happy Mother's Day. And I just want to know that this morning you are special. And if you don't believe that you are special, you are blessed and highly favored by God. I am blessed and highly favored yes i am blessed and highly favored i was bought at a price a godly sacrifice say i am blessed and highly favored oh i am blessed and highly favored, yes, I am blessed and highly favored. I was bought at a price, a godly sacrifice. Say, I am blessed and highly favored. I'm so blessed, nobody can steal my joy or take my love away. I'm so blessed that God provides for me in every single way. I'm so blessed that God grants me mercy each and every day. So blessed. Yes, I am so blessed. Oh, I am and highly favored. Yes, I am blessed and highly favored. I was bought at a price, a godly sacrifice. Say, I am blessed and highly favored so when the lord blesses you nobody can curse you yes when the lord blesses you nobody can curse you because you can rest assured your needs he supplied yes you can rest Assured, protection is always nigh. So when the Lord blesses you, nobody can curse you. Say we are blessed and highly favored. Yes, we are blessed and highly favored. We were bought at a price, a godly sacrifice. Say we are blessed 
and highly favored. Oh, blessed and highly favored. We are blessed and highly favored. We were bought at a price, a godly sacrifice. Say we are blessed and highly favored. Yes, we are blessed and highly favored. Bless the Lord. Amen. We are blessed and highly favored. What do you say? And we are so blessed this morning to have with us Sister Celine and her two daughters. Uh, used to be Celine Williams. I don't know what's the current surname. Uh, could you stand let us see you? Sister Celine Parks and her two daughters. Welcome and may God bless you all. Welcome home. Happy Sabbath. Good morning to everyone. Is Hanif here, my friend Hanif? Hanif from Dung Riverside, is he present? No? All right, because he told me he was going to be in church today. I was looking forward to seeing him. Thank you, Brother Hugh Thomas, for your words of introduction, you forced me to reflect, and my mind went right back to when we dedicated Cheyenne, and I, she was the fourth child, the fourth dedication, and I recall, you know, telling you that my plan was to have 40 children. And it's still in my mind. <laughs> Actually, it's not only my mind because I have been bowling balls. It's just that there have been no balls. So I've not been scoring. <laughs> but you know, God is good. You know, we have our own plans, but God has his own plans for us. And he has actually given me more than 40 on a daily basis to take care of. And um, God knew why he left me with the four. Because I don't know how I would have managed with the 40 plus, hmm, Lord have mercy. Happy Mother's Day to all your mothers. God bless you and I want to encourage you to be faithful to your duty and responsibility as mothers. I wish that my mother was here. Happy Mother's Day to my wife, Sean Andrea Sagan Bowman. <laughs> Incidentally, last week, Sabbath, she celebrated her birthday. Happy belated birthday. Good month. I was telling these beautiful ladies here, I'm not accustomed to sitting among, you know, wonderful, beautiful ladies like this. I feel a bit nervous. <laughs> and Sister Lena was trying to give me some consolation. Um, and I'm trying to figure out why I'm feeling so nervous. I think I have an idea. I wouldn't share it with you, though. But I knew I was assigned to be God's mouthpiece today. And so I've been asking the Lord for guidance in, you know, preparing a message, a relevant message for his people, for myself and for his people today. And the first message that came to my mind is a one word, two letter word message. And that is if. Say if. Spell if. I have. That's correct. 
And that's the title, and I still have the title on the page, If. And that's the message I started preparing. I started doing my research and, you know, scriptural references and so on. And then the Spirit told me in his own way that you're not doing what I want you to do. Because I was going down a very intellectual line with all these ifs. And I actually had a whole lot of ifs, you know, I started typing a whole lot of ifs. You're going to still hear a lot of ifs in the presentation today. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, what I want you to focus on is faith and faithfulness. Is what? And my purpose today is to encourage us as mothers, fathers, children to have faith in God and to remain faithful to God. And that's my purpose and objective in this presentation, I believe, is what God wants for me to present today. And I trust that it's going to fall in the context of the celebration of motherhood. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have been with me during the preparation of this message, very important message. I pray to God that now you will be with me, take control and direct and speak for me, speak through me as I deliver this message for your people. Make it relevant, make it meaningful to the lives of each person present, each person hearing, even those following on the world wide web. And may it be a means of transforming our lives, making us into the individual you want us to be. In Jesus' name. I've had, I don't know if it's pleasant or unpleasant, experience during the past week and a half of having to use public transport, the minivans. And trust me, you have to have faith to travel in those minivans. You have to have faith. Yesterday afternoon, Myself and Shaboni jumped into one at the junction here, heading to Kingston. And between somewhere in Lacqua, I, I said to myself, boy, I don't think we're going to make it to Kingston. I have to come out of this van. Saying that to myself. And I thought of our plan. And um, I said to Shaboni, we're going to come out in Belmont. When the van reached Belmont, I said, leave us here. And I came out, and I told Shaboni why I came out of the van, because what I saw was happening, I was convinced we were not going to make it to Kingstown. And we stopped the next van that came up. We jumped in. And we were going. And Shaboni turned to me and said, we should have stayed in that one. <laughs> And he was right. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. But the, the, the thing is, I knew the driver of the second van. A driver from Richmond Park, somebody I knew since I came to St. Vincent many, many years ago. And so, even though I was scared, I had some faith in the driver. And so I didn't come out a second time. <laughs> but what is faith? The Bible defines faith for us, and I trust that the, 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 the folks using the technology there would assist us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And if you can get the New International Version, I'll appreciate that very much. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, we have the most excellent definition of faith right there in the Bible. Now, let's read together. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's not the New International Version. Let me read what the, how the New International Version renders it. It says, now faith 
is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure and being certain, being sure of what we hope for and certain about what we do not see. What is it, Christian friends, that we hope for? We hope that God, the God we serve, is trustworthy, amen? That he is trustworthy and that he will honor his promises. And we can be sure, I don't want to guarantee us today, that we can be sure that God's promise of salvation, eternal life, and a resurrected body is certain. But we have a little problem because none of us, none of us has ever seen God. None of us has ever seen heaven. Nobody has ever returned from heaven, from the dead, to give us assurance that this thing that we hope for is really going to happen. But are we certain about it? Are you certain about it? Are you certain about it? What is it that we hope for? Why are we here today? Why do we come here every Sabbath? Why are we serving God? Why are we giving up all the nice time to be here? Because we hope for heaven. Amen? Are you certain that that is going to happen? I really thought you would have been giving me some answers. Are you certain it's going to happen? God said so, what Thomas says. That's our faith. And the, the truth is, friends, if we do not have and exercise that faith, we are just being miserable and wasting our time. Might as well we go and have some nice time. Faith is being sure and certain about what we hope for. I'll just draw some illustrations to help us understand what it means to have faith. The book of Mark, well, Matthew, Mark, and John records a story which we know very well of that woman who was sick with that issue of blood. Remember her? How long was she sick for? 12 years. And Baba says that she tried everything and everything failed. But she saw what Jesus was doing. She heard about what Jesus was doing. And Baba tells us in Mark chapter 5, you can read it in your own time between verses 25 and 34. It's also recorded in Matthew and John that Jesus was on his way being invited by an important person to go and heal the man's daughter. And as is customary, as Jesus was going, there was a large crowd of people following Jesus. Following Jesus. And the Bible says, and this is faith, that this woman that had this issue of blood for 12 long years had such confidence. She was so certain. She said, all I need to do is what? Just touch. That is faith, isn't that so? She said, all I need to do is just touch the hem of his garment and I am certain I'll be made whole. Somebody today need to have that kind of faith. To believe that all we need to do is just connect with Jesus Christ. 
I want to encourage us today, my friends, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, reach out in faith and touch Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that five days after she became whole, You're not reading your Bibles. Ten days after she became whole. How long did it take? The Bible says immediately she became whole. That's a demonstration of faith. She said she saw Jesus. She saw her opportunity. And she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I am certain I'll be made whole. And many of us, and that includes myself, we want things to happen, but we don't want to exercise. We do not exercise the faith, the trust, and the confidence in Jesus. As a result, we do not get the benefit. We have to be faithful. Peter was also, Peter also demonstrated this kind of faith in Jesus Christ. Remember that night? When they were out in the sea, the Bible says it was the third watch, which was three o'clock in the morning, and they saw what they thought was a ghost walking in the water. Remember that? And they became fearful. And Jesus, you know, seeing their fear, he said, Relax yourself, fellas. It is I. And this big, bold, multi, multi, brazen Peter. As is customary, well, Lord, if it's you, let me come to you. Of course, Peter had experience with Jesus. If it's you, bid me come in the water to you. You see, what one commentator says is that we praise, you know, we big up Peter for exercising this, this faith in Jesus Christ. But Probably somewhere in the back of Peter's mind, if perchance it's not Jesus Christ, at least I can swim. Because Peter was a good swimmer. Remember, at, at, at another time, when they were out there fishing and early in the morning, Jesus was on the seashore. They were out. And when the disciple says, It is Jesus, the Bible says they were all naked. Peter. They, they, Peter put his clothes on and jumped into the water and swam to the shore. So Peter was a strong swimmer. And one commentator said, probably somewhere in the back of Peter's mind, just in case this thing didn't happen, at least I can swim. And I want to agree with that commentator. But Peter at least at least initially, he demonstrated the faith. Jesus said, come. And the Bible says, Peter stepped out of the boat, and suddenly, the law of gravity and all the laws of physics and so on were all defied. Peter stayed on top of water. But if you read the Bible, he's there in the water, looking at Jesus, and suddenly realized that this thing is for real. I mean, it was a step of faith. Don't you agree? But then he realized it was for real. And the Bible says, let me see if I can, because I'm running ahead of myself. Verses 30 to 31. Matthew chapter 14, verses 30 to 31. Could you put that on the screen for us, please? Let's read that together. But when he saw the wind, what? Boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to what? Sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31. And what? Immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of, of what? 
little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt? So the evidence is there. Peter did demonstrate some faith, but he did not have the full confidence that Jesus was able to do what he asked him to do. Step out and come. And so the Bible says, he saw the winds boisterous. He's following Jesus, looking unto Jesus, and everything was fine. But for a moment, he took his eyes off of Jesus Christ. And what he saw? The winds boisterous. He saw all the problems in the world. When we take our eyes off of Jesus Christ, all we see, my friends, is discouragement, distress, and frustration. We need to keep our eyes, our gaze, fixed on Jesus Christ. I thank God for Jesus Christ. Especially with the job that I have been called to do, Brother Kent. Because if I take my eyes off of Jesus Christ, I'm going to resign today from that job. But it's the goodness of God who gives me the courage, not just today, but over the years, to keep pressing on. I asked for Hanif because he was there yesterday trying to make my life miserable. And anybody can go and tell him. He told me he was going to be in church today. And I really wanted to see him in church today. He was planning to come to church to make me miserable in church today. I really want to see him because I believe at the end of his service, we would have been baptizing him because he needs a good baptism. O ye of little faith. He took his eyes off of Jesus Christ and he began sinking. Do you find yourself as if you're sinking sometimes? Are you where you used to be in your Christian experience? Are you where you know you're supposed to be in your Christian experience? Or are you sinking? If you think that you might be sinking, it might just be that you're not keeping your focus, your gaze on Jesus Christ. But the Bible says, Jesus is a friend who sticks by us closer than even our brother, our sister, even our wonderful mothers. That when Peter was about to go under, thank God, he knew the power of Jesus Christ. He said, Lord, save me. And like the woman who was healed immediately, the Bible says, immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and held him. And pulled him out of the water. If you find yourself sinking, some problem, whatever it is, not faithful, to God, not faithful to family, not faithful to duty, and you think you want to make a turnaround, you have to call on Jesus. Lord, save me. And it's, it is my confidence, my submission to us, that Jesus is very present, and he will stretch forth his hand and save you. And so he's calling us to do the impossible like he called Peter to do the impossible, to walk on water. And the fact is that Peter did walk on water. And he's calling us to do the impossible. What is the impossible? Quote, unquote. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Could you put it on the screen for us? What is Jesus calling us to do? Together? Be what? Therefore what? Perfect. Be what? Perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. That is what Christ is calling us to do. To be. To become. To be perfect. Impossible, isn't it? Humanly speaking, impossible. Impossible. But why would Jesus ask us to do something if it is impossible? You see, we can only do it in Jesus Christ. I can do what? 
all things. I can be perfect in Christ because it's not I, but Christ who lives in me. That makes me perfect. Not me of myself, but Christ who lives in me. And Christ says, come. Be perfect. And we have to exercise that faith that Peter exercised when Christ said, come. And he stepped out of that boat and walked on that water. And there's so many more illustrations of faith that we can think about. Noah was asked to build an ark because it was going to be rain. Something that had never happened before. And Noah, in faith, built that ark. And of course, rain did come. Joshua was asked to walk around the walls of Jericho and the walls will come tumbling down. Crazy, isn't it? Yes, it's crazy, Sister Munzee. You can walk around a wall and it's just fall in like that. Humanly speaking, it's crazy. But if God says it is possible, then it's not crazy. All right? And he walked around the walls, and the walls, they blew the trumpet, they came tumbling down. Moses led the children of Israel on dry ground across the Red Sea because they had faith. They had a confidence. They had the assurance that what God asked them to do, he's able to do it. Excuse me. Without faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, part of our scripture reading, Bible says what? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you want to be if you want to please God, we must exercise faith. Believing that what he says he will do, what he has promised that he is able to do. But having faith is not the same as being faithful. We need to be, to have both faith and to be faithful. Having faith is not the same as being faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? To be faithful means to be reliable, to be steadfast and unwavering. To be faithful means to be dependable. And the Bible speaks of this type of faithfulness in four different ways. We're going to quickly examine them. It talks about faithfulness as an attribute, a virtue of God himself. The Bible says that God is faithful. Faithfulness as an attribute of those of us who claim to be his followers. If we are true followers of Jesus Christ, we must be faithful. The Bible speaks of faithfulness as a characteristic which many who claim to be his followers are lacking and need to have. And it also tells us that this faithfulness is not something we can create for ourselves. It is a gift from God. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse three. Second Thessalonians three three tells us that the Lord is what? Faithful who shall establish you and what? Keep you from evil. And God is faithful. He has promised that he will protect his people, and he is faithful to that promise. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Just look at a few references quickly. 
There at what? No temptation taken you. Read please. Together. Right. Now the Bible is telling us, the scripture is encouraging us, reminding us that God is faithful. It says that temptations will come, trials will come, difficulties will come. But if, and this is my confidence, Brother Lewis, when all the difficulties come, because I'm trying by God's grace to be faithful to him, that he allows it and the devil cannot touch me. And that's my confidence. He cannot touch me unless God allows it. And it is my confidence, it's my belief, that when God allows the devil to touch me, it is because he has also provided a way of escape. It is because he, God, also has confidence in me because he says he will not allow you to bear more he will not allow you to be tempted more than you are able to bear <coughs> Lord have mercy God will not allow you to be tempted more you're able to bear. But Sister Leno, when I told her I was nervous, she said she's going to help me, so she has to help me now. He says, with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape. So, take comfort, my friends. Whatever trials you might be facing right now, whether it's with your spouse, I know we have a lot of that, even in our church. With your children, we have a lot of that. It's financial, we have too much of that. Or whatever it is, God will not allow you, he will not allow us to suffer more than we are able to bear. But watch me, this promise is for those who are faithful to God. We cannot expect, expect to eat our cake and still have it. If you want the blessings of God, and here's where the if factor comes in. If you want the blessings of God, we have to be faithful to him. He says, if you confess your sins, he's what? Faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and to cleanse you from what? All unrighteousness. But some of us walk around with our sins. When God has promised, we walk around with the burdens. When God has promised to cleanse us, we walk around with all kind of guilt in our minds. When God has promised to cleanse us and free us from the guilt of sin. Why? Because the if factor, we didn't pay attention to it. If you confess your sins. He is faithful and just. Is there someone who needs to confess a sin today? And by the way, confession is not simply going by your bedside, kneeling down and praying, Lord, forgive me, or coming to the altar and kneeling, asking Lord for, for forgiveness. Confession means sometimes that you might have to go to Sister Thomas hmm, and talk to Sister Thomas because I might have wronged Sister Thomas and I can't come in here asking God for forgiveness. I'm confessing my sins. I did Sister Thomas wrong and I'm not talking to Sister Thomas. You're wasting time. That's what the Bible says. When you come to church on Sabbath, and the deacons are walking around with offering bowl, 
collect an offering, and you're about to throw your offering, and you remember, uh oh, a cuss. I mean, somebody was telling me yesterday, you ain't seen Vincent so long, you can't talk like Vincent Jean. I, I don't know how to. No, you're going to laugh at me. <laughs> you use a bad word on a sister yesterday. And you didn't make it up. The Bible says, leave your gift. Go to the sister, the brother. Make it up. Confess your sins, your faults towards each other. And then come back. Otherwise, God does not accept your gift. And we have that problem in this church here in Richmond Park. Do we? Do we have the problem? <laughs> Be careful, you know. Do we have the problem? Because when I say we have the problem, maybe it's because I know I'm guilty. That's why I'm so certain that we have the problem. Because I know I wronged somebody and I make it up yet. And so it's good for me to say, yes, we have the problem. But it's better if after the Lord has brought it to my consciousness, I go to Brother Thomas and say, listen, it's time enough. Let's get over this foolishness. Let's make it up. Don't you agree with me? If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithfulness. Reminds me of Daniel and his friends being steadfast when they were told to bow down. They said, King, you can do what you want. You can hit the, the, the foreigners 70 times, 700 times. We ain't bowing down. Faithfulness, Daniel and his friends in a strange country being tempted to do things that they were taught were not correct to do. You know, like when I leave home, leave my family and I go overseas, my wife not there, children not there to see how I behave. And so I can misbehave because they would not know. What do we do in those circumstances when nobody is watching us? Are we faithful? The Bible says in Daniel chapter 3 that Daniel purpose in his heart that he will not sin against God. And you see, my friends, Daniel and his friends were able to remain faithful because they purpose in their hearts that this is what God asks for them to do and this is what they will do. We have to purpose within our hearts to be faithful to God, to be faithful to our vows. We come, we get baptized, we get married, and we say yes to all kinds of vows. Are we faithful to them? Do we purpose? Sean Andreas Sagan Bowman, that it doesn't matter how miserable Gabriel George Celestine Bowman is, I have vowed a vow till death do us part. So when he gets up from the bed and he doesn't make it up, when he refuses to come and help me grind the peas in the kitchen, I have to stick with him. Are we faithful to our vows? That we are going to support the church in all its activities? You see, faithfulness is something that must be demonstrated. Faithfulness is not just something we talk about. Faithfulness is how we respond when we are put to the test. Jesus had to demonstrate it himself. Remember after he fasted for 40 days, the Bible says the devil took him and tempted him. If you be the son of God, his faithfulness to God, his faithfulness to his mission was being tempted. If you be the son of God, Turn these
stones into bread. Of course, he was hungry. And the devil knew that. And my friends, the devil knows your weaknesses. He knows your weaknesses. He knows where to come and hit you. Look at Jesus' response to every temptation that the devil took to him. First, he said, turn these stones to bread. He says, uh, be presumptuous, throw yourself down. And then he said, bow down, worship me. And in every instant, Jesus' response was, it is what? Written. In every instance, it is written. How did Jesus know? That it was written. He had to read it. And so when the temptations came, because Jesus had fortified himself, he had been reading, and he had fortified his mind with the truth, he was able to say, it is written. Now David, thy word have I hid in my heart, my mind, that what? I might not sin against thee. If we are to be faithful to God, we must fortify our minds with the truth that are found in God's word. And, and the people, as Jesus, Jesus was being crucified, and the rulers thought that they had him all locked down, and they said, if you are truly the Son of God, why don't you come down from the cross? And others, you know, mocking him said, imagine he saved other people and himself he cannot save. But that was just a temptation. Thank God, Jesus was faithful to duty. Don't you think Jesus could have come down from the cross? He could have. But if he had done so, where would we have been? Where would we have been? Our faith would be useless, a waste of time. Jesus had to complete the mission for which he had come. He came to this world to live, to show us how to live and to die, that we might have eternal life. That's why he came, to suffer. Jesus cried. You remember that? He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Because of the pain, the anguish he was going through. If it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But he didn't stop there. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. In other words, Father, this thing is difficult, but I'm determined I will remain faithful to you. We need to have to be faithful to Jesus Christ, faithful to our duties. But sadly, faithfulness is a virtue that some individuals lack. Some of us lack. I wish that I can say, I could stand here and say, I am 100% faithful to God. But I would not. Because I might suffer the fate of Ananias and Sapphira. And I don't want that to happen to me. You know, the church was at, at its pinnacle of unity. And you know, everybody was selling and sharing with each other. The Bible says that the church was together. And I wish that we can come to that point where the church can really be together. And the Bible says that, you know, this couple, they sold a parcel of land and came to church the Sabbath morning with this big, huge offering. I don't know how much it was. The Bible didn't say how much it was. But I want to feel it was plenty money. And they presented the offering. And the, 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 the elders asked, is this what you sold the land for? Well, Ananias and Sapphira, they had no problem because after all, it's plenty money. 
And he said, yes. And the Bible says, and I said, yes. And I think it was Peter asked him, why are you lying? Let, let's read verse 4. Verse 4 of Acts chapter 15. Sorry, Acts chapter 5. Verse 4. Very important points. As we rush to the end. Acts chapter 5, verse 4. The Bible says, Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? In other words, we didn't tell you how much to bring. It was your decision. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why as a what? Conceive this thing in thy heart and what? Lied unto... Lie not, sorry, unto men, but unto God. The Bible says that he dropped dead at the altar. And the wife came, and she too dropped dead at the altar. Why? Because they were unfaithful. And I couldn't help, I tried to resist it because I wasn't asked to present here as treasurer, but I couldn't help to encourage us to be faithful in our returning of tithes and offerings. Amen? And we should ask ourselves, am I faithful in the return of my tithes and offerings? I mean, I can say that I'm faithful in the return of tithes. Or probably I can't say so, because my employers, they probably don't have the faith. Instead of allowing me to return it, they decide they're going to take it out. So I don't have that burden, Sister Anna, of wondering if I should be faithful in return of tithes. Because it's taken out. And we all know what a tithe is, right? If you earn $100, the tithe is how much? $10. And that belongs to whom? God. But we also expected to return what? A faithful offering. What's a faithful offering? The story of Ananias and Sapphira helps us understand what a faithful offering is. That's between you and God. But what we agree with the Lord to return as a faithful offering, let's be faithful to it. And by the way, some of us return tithes, but don't return any offerings. All right? I want to encourage us, return an offering. And let's make sure, it doesn't matter how small the tithe is, how small the offering is, let's be faithful to God. He's not so much concerned with the thousands of dollars we can return. Because if it's not a faithful offering, we are wasting time. Faithfulness is a gift from God. It's a what? It's a gift from God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Galatians 5 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Faithfulness is a gift from God. If any of us find ourselves not being faithful, and you have listened to this message today, and you want to say, Lord, I have been falling short, but I want to exercise faith and faithfulness in you, we need to ask God to give us that gift. And it is my confidence that if we ask, the Bible says he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you are saved through what? Faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is what? A gift from God. Hover over me, Holy Spirit. Fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, Lord, come 
and fill me now. I want to be faithful to God. Is there someone else like me who would want to be, who would want to say, Lord, as the songwriter puts it, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. That is my tendency. I want to be faithful, but I have this tendency to be wayward, to do my own thing. But I want your spirit to come now and fill me. Is there someone who wants to say, Lord, I want to be faithful? Could you raise your hand? I want to demonstrate that faith. I want to be faithful to you in every aspect of my life. Could you stand? Let's sing one verse of 260. Hover o'er me, Holy Spirit. Bathe my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh come, and fill me now. The faith and the faithfulness we need to have, we cannot have it in our own strength. Let's go. Come, O oh come, and fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Your heads are bowed, eyes are closed. We are praying. We want to encourage each of us to whisper a personal prayer to God. We know ourselves. We know our relationship. Each one of us know where and how we stand in relation to what Jesus requires of us. In relation to our vows to Jesus Christ. We know where we have fallen short. Let's ask Jesus Christ, who is promised and who is faithful to his promises, to fill us now and take control. Mighty Father, Thank you for being faithful to us. The Bible says that you are faithful and just. And it's a virtue that you desire for each of your followers to have. As we examine ourselves, as we introspect, as we reflect, dear God, we recognize that I recognize, dear God, that I have fallen short. And I believe there are many others here who have also so recognized. And we're asking, dear God, that you help us now. Take control of every aspect of our being. Bring us to that point in our relationship, dear Father, where we can have full confidence, we can be certain of our belief in you in your promises, dear Father, and help us to have faith, to keep our gaze, our focus on you, that when Christ comes, we will be found faithful, that as we walk the streets on a daily basis and others look upon us, they can see a good representation, they can find a good example of faithfulness, in us. Thank you, dear Father, 
for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name. All right, please remain standing for the closing. We'd like to thank Brother Bowman for the message today, that of faith and being faithful. We are now going to turn to a closing hymn, which is number 608. 608, Faith is the Victory. bow our heads for the benediction. Almighty gracious Father, we thank you for your words that we have heard here this morning. Help us to apply our hearts unto wisdom. Continue to bless us and be with us, be with all our mothers. Help us as mothers that will rightly represent you before our children and our brothers and sisters. Continue to bless us and be with us and may we keep on being faithful to you so that when you come in the clouds of glory, we can all have a home in your eternal kingdom. These are not the mercies we do ask with thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.